Good evening, this is Dr. Thomas Klein. I'm a specialist in rare and chronic diseases, uh, again, coming to you from Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I represent a group called JAF, Educational Consortium LLC. We are a group that looks for facts. We're not political. We just present information for people to use to practice medicine more effectively and to solve problems. One of the problems we're trying to solve is how is it that millions of people were taken off their opiate pain medications for apparently no medical reason, for political reasons, fear of addiction phobia. That's what's going on. This is what's behind everything. When people say, why is this happening? That's why it's happening. As we mentioned last time, nothing worse than the thought of a junkie, one of your children turning into junkies. It's awful. It can be prevented. Nobody has to become a junkie. It's a disease like any other disease. If controlled, it's not a fatal disease, so it's a lot better than taking Humira or some other drug where you're liable to die from infectious diseases taking this medicine, but that's the risk that people assume. Okay, I'll do that. Well, there is a risk of taking opiates. Four per thousand will addict, which means when they take the medicine, they're going to be going to the moon. And if it's not controlled within a couple of days, it can lead to a disastrous life on the streets. So it's a serious disease, like other serious diseases. It should be treated as a serious disease by doctors not by politicians, and not by police officers. It's a disease. So, this is a serious problem. High doses are considered to cause death, addiction, and can lead to all sorts of nasty things called scourges and, um, and people that are shunned from society. So, let's look at the question. Most medicines do have upper limits. So it's in our culture as doctors and patients and everyone else to think if you exceed a certain amount, you're going you're gonna to have problems. For example, Tylenol, if you exceed 3,000 milligrams a day, you're going to have liver damage. This is true of all drugs. There's only a few drugs that the FDA feels are safe enough that you can prescribe them in any dose. One of them is insulin, the other is Coumadin that's used for blood thinning, and the third is opiates. So this is an unusual drug. You can give high doses of this drug for years and years and years and never have a problem. Not even the slightest injury to your kidneys or liver or heart, like uh, NSAIDs. Uh, ibuprofen can actually cause heart problems, good grief. So this is an amazing drug, and it has been demonized for moral reasons and for fear of addiction phobia. I hate to keep flashing this card, but that's what is behind all this. So if the FDA has no upper limits, I can prescribe 100 milligrams to you, I can prescribe 1,000 milligrams to you. I've seen patients on a thousand milligrams and they're not dead, they're doing fine, but people are frightened of high doses. Why is this? Well, it started out that a group of doctors um, got together who believed that opiates really should not be used or dangerous and they went to the FDA and they asked the FDA to limit the doses of opiate pain medicine. Now the FDA already decided not to limit them because they're safe. But this group of people believed they needed to limit the doses. So in 2012, the prop group of doctors who believed that the medicine should be limited went to the FDA, the proper place, submitted a, uh, a proposal to limit the doses. About a year later, in 2013, the FDA came back with its report, which can be found online, 
2012-P-0818, you can read it yourself, and they said we're not going to limit the dose. You have not presented enough information. Now, the big shtick that was used at CDC, where they had a lot of writers from this group, who one FDA official said they were lunatic fringe because of their stance against pain medicines. In order not to use pain medicines, you have to deny that people have pain. And some of the members of PROP, and you can see it on their YouTube site, say that really nobody in chronic pain needs opiates. They can just think about it, it'll go away. This is an extreme viewpoint. This group is not backed by any other medical groups in this country. It is not backed by the UN. It is not backed by any of our federal agencies except the CDC. And that's a little story for another time. So we're talking about high doses now. Is there evidence that high doses are more dangerous in the general population. Remember, CDC numbers are all coming from heroin addicts. 40,000 people die a year of overdoses. Whoa, wait a minute, who are they? Have any of the writers and journalists asked who are they? I could say that there's 2,000 people that died last year in Wyoming. The next question will be, well, Dr. Klein, who were they? Were they all gored by uh, bulls? They trip on uh, electric fences. How, how did they die? But nobody's ever asked that. The 40,000 a year that die are heroin addicts. Why do they die? Because they're not receiving any medical care. Nobody's teaching them how not to die. Nobody interviews them. When's the last time you saw interviews of several uh, people with addiction disease? We're interviewing them now at JAF and we're just getting started and so far we've done about 30 people all 30 have said on the very first pill they took they felt energized and went to the moon that's triggering a genetic disease it's not true for the other addictions it's only true for this one so back to the high dose um, CDC which uh, half of the uh, writers belong to the prop group that we mentioned uh, basically says that there's evidence that studies have been done to show that higher doses cause more deaths. So I went and dug them up. It's hard to find them actually uh, because there's a lot of um, confusing stuff here from the CDC. Uh, evidence reviews they call them. Uh, there's no such thing as a clinical evidence review. That means people sitting around reading these papers, right? So the CDC guidelines, uh, they said themselves that were of low scientific quality um, and there's actually nothing lower than low. Below that is zero, and there's no zero, so low is zero. So they have no scientific evidence. And then they go on to say, it's because of our opinions. Whose opinions were there? Half of the people involved in writing and advising belong to prop the extremist group of physicians who believes nobody should be getting these medicines. 3,500 years, and all everybody's been wrong. 3,500 years we've been using these medicines. You think by now if they didn't work, they wouldn't be used. So CDC and Roger Chow, or Cho, I'm sorry, I mispronounced his name at the University of Oregon, who was one of the authors of the CDC guidelines. They're all hanging their hat on an obscure study called the AQ, AQRS or something, 218. And in that study, they had seven studies to show high doses cause more deaths. So you can't access that, it's hard to access directly from the CDC, so it's kind of hidden. Well, here they are, all seven. And we at JAF are going through them one by one. And guess what we found? Six of the seven had authors tied to PROP. So we have PROP papers 
supporting this group of people that wants to stop using opiates and they claim that these studies show there's a dose relationship more medicine more deaths so far we found that none of these studies actually show that but what these studies do show is that overdose deaths in the general population those people getting prescriptions is very very rare these studies show that approximately 500 to 1,000 people die per year of overdoses from medicines they've been prescribed, opiate medicines. So that leaves 40,000 people, of which 39,500 die on the streets. Only 500 die from prescription drugs. So this is false. Thank you.